Welcome to On The Curbs, I'm your host Team Albus Daly. This week I'm joined by one of Sweden's finest, racing driver Michaela Erlin Kotlinski. This year she's joined Jensen Button's JBXC Extreme E racing team. She's driven alongside the man himself, Jensen Button, in Saudi Arabia, and now with new teammate Kevin Hansen in Senegal. We caught up recently to chat about how she got into motor racing, the importance of Extreme E's legacy projects, gender equality in motorsport, and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, Michaela. Thank you for being here today. First of all, how are you? Hi, Timo. Thank you. Um, I'm great. Actually, the sun is not shining in Sweden. It's raining. Uh, oh. But otherwise, no, but uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm just feeling great. It's nice to have nice to have summer, have a little bit of a break. Now it's about uh, one month till we do the next Extreme Year round um, in Greenland. So super excited about that. But thanks for, for being here. No, it's my pleasure. Happy to have you. And uh, first question I always like to ask everyone who comes on here. What first got you into motorsport? For me, it was, uh, I would say, uh, I mean, it was a choice in the end. Uh, and I would not say that I was forced into it. But of course, I was influenced by it by my family. They did pretty much everything except Formula One. Um, he won Paris the car. He drove Formula cars, Nibbegring, everything. And then uh, my mom was a rally driver. And then, of course, she met my dad at the rally. So he was also a rally driver and my brother was a rally driver. So as you can see, a lot of motors. Yes. And I usually joke and say that I didn't have a choice, but I did do have a choice. Uh, So I started with go-karting when I was 12. Did, though, drive on the ice the first time when I was uh, 10 years old in a car. So that's the story for me. I used to that quite quickly then. Yeah, I mean, funny story is that my parents used to work as uh, instructors by ice driving then and ice drifting. And then it was just easier to put me and my brother into another car so we could drive on the other side of the lake while they were having their customers. And that's the way it started. So it was easier than having, a, I don't know, a nanny or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Definitely different way of doing things. I like it. Though. Yeah, it was fun. So do you you think that's going to give you a a little bit of advantage then when we get to Greenland then? Because you've had all that practice on the ice from a young age already. (laughs) Mm, The thing is, though, we are actually not going to race on the ice in Greenland. A lot of people think so. Uh, We are actually going to race on where the glacier used to be, also to show how dramatically it is melting away. So it's more it's going to be more of of a mud, muddy race, I would say, um, in Greenland. But definitely excited to go there, to see the place, also to showcase for the fans where we are going to race. And uh, being a, a part of Scandinavia, it's the closest to a home race that I can come. Hopefully it goes well for you then. Um, when you say, you, cause you've, you say you, you've been influenced by like, the off-road racing that all your family does and everything. But you, know, you did quite a bit of track racing, so then did you just decide it was time to to see what the fuss is all about and that's what attracted you to extremely or what happened um, no nah, i would say it was it, it was kind of a coincidence i was doing a, a job together with continental because i've been working mm. with continental since 2018 and then we did a tire launch of a new winter tire and uh, worked really well and then i heard about extremely and of course i thought it sounded really epic and really cool but i also knew that it was a bit out of or maybe quite a lot outside of my comfort zone uh, but I did get the question from them to help them to develop the tires for the series. And I was very open and said that I don't have a lot of off-road experience. They said, we do, however. Uh, and that's what you also can see now with season one. With so limited testing because of COVID, um, still the tires are performing really well and it's working mm-hmm. really well. So I, I just love the whole concept about the racing series and the idea and I've always been of a a kind of a, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad, but a naive person thinking, you know, whatever, let's just try it. Pretty much like Pippi Longstrump, Pippi Longstocking. Like, I just head into it. I'll try it. I'll do my best. That's all I can do. And I am so happy that I took the opportunity because Extremely is by far the most the most exciting racing with with the new format with female and male drivers 
with the whole the whole aspect around the series it is the the most exciting series overall that I've ever been a part of. And so when you just look at it on paper before you even see any of the footage, it just sounds like such an epic kind of thing to do for a championship. You're like, oh, okay, I'm really, I'm just, where do I, where do I sign? Where do I watch? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Part of that must be uh, incredible. Um, exactly. What's then been the biggest challenge for you from Extreme E so far? I would say, like I said before, lacking the experience of off-road racing, that type of racing. Uh, I am so happy that I have my ice driving um, since I was 10 then every winter, because without that, uh, I would really be, um, it would be really tough. It is still tough uh, because a lot of people there has a lot of experience, but I mean, the, the teamwork that I've had both with Jensen in the first round and then in the second round with Kevin has been really helpful and we've really developed as a team. So um, I, feel, I feel ready for Greenland and uh, it is limited time in the car, but you have to try to adapt quickly and see the situations. And that's where I'm also happy to be part of the series from day one. So I suppose in a way it's, it's limited experience in the car, but at the same time, because it's something slightly different from what everyone's done, there's only so much an advantage other people can get from that as well. So. That too. And then also because we have so limited time of testing and driving. So there is, I mean, you have the recognition laps that you get to do, um, not with the Extreme E car. And then you get one practice lap and that's it. Then it's head out to, to qualifying session. So it's a little bit also about management, risk management, but then also to take, um, to be quick. Because as you can see, if you look from the qualifying rounds, we're speaking seconds of, uh, of yeah, mm. nine minutes laps so with two drivers. To, I don't know about you, but I'm used to seeing just like half a second at most being taken out of a lap and you're getting like 20 seconds on these kind of laps. Like, how the hell are they finding all this time around the place? It's just, it's mental. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it, it's, still, it's, still very, it's still very tight between the teams. So you have, to, you have to perform, but also you can't afford to have a big mistake. No, no definitely not. Um, especially with just because again the whole part of it is bringing a limited number of people and parts to all these places so you really need to make sure you take care of it as well because it could be like you had for uh, news for lottery and round one one small thing and then they were gone for the whole yeah. weekend exactly so then you mentioned Jensen how was it having him as a teammate and the boss um, it was Jensen is really down to earth guy and really taking care of the whole team and and also me as a teammate and I think for him of course it's a big role to be both team manager and driver because those are two really big big um, uh, yeah jobs to do so uh, I would say in, we were also surprised in Saudi uh, for the first round coming in that late to the championship and you could really mm. feel that that was tough for us coming in that late the others had had time to to done their testing in December, then to look at all the data and the info they had. We did the testing on Tuesday and then we were racing on Friday. So it was really tight in between. Right. But with, with that said, uh, Jensen was really calm about the whole thing, saying the situation is what it is. Let's just do the best that we can out of it. So coming home with the sixth place, then uh, also having some technical issues in the first round, we were re really happy about that. Um, and then we had the time between the first race to the second one to analyze data, to see what we could do, what we could change. And that was then, of course, more of a step into the same, or to the right direction and then catching up with other teams because then finally we also had the opportunity to analyze uh, data from driving. And then, I mean, I, I, you mentioned just before we started recording that you might not give the most exciting answer to this, but I've got to try anyway. Do you have a prefer preference on the teammate for, for Jensen or Kevin? <laughs> they are both really good teammates. And I think for me, it's really important that you get along well with your teammate, that you have a yeah, good cooperation, because in the end, as you can see from both events, the two drivers really have to perform. And for me, it's important to have a situation where I feel trusted and believed in, which I really felt from both Jensen and Kevin. So I wouldn't say that the one or the other is the better. Uh, I would just say that I've been so lucky to have two great teammates so far in Extreme E. A good, good team player thing there to say. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's really, it's really what it's all about. Because especially for me, I mean, people are different. But for me, I have to feel comfortable in the team where I'm working in. And like I said, believed in and trusted in. 
which I really felt. And that's also when I find the environment to perform and when I can perform. And yeah, so that's what I felt. So these, these kind of races were, because it's all very, very different surfaces and very different layouts every, every time. It's, it's, you want to be able to trust and get on with the other person quite well. So it's, it's not always guaranteed to the fact that you can never do that twice already is, is testament to both of them, I suppose. No, no, no. I mean, it's it's hard work ahead of every event, event and hard work at the event to to make a good performance. So, um, yeah, team, teamwork is is all about it. Is there a fun story you can tell us from behind the scenes then at a race weekend? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I hope the guys don't get uh, <laughs> angry with me for saying this, but it was quite funny. So in in Senegal, uh, we were told that uh, the chief uh, mechanic and engineer. He said that if you win one of the finals on the Sunday, the whole team is going to take a swim in the pool by the hotel. And mm-hmm. I didn't believe that they would do it. But then the day after, I got a video of them just jumping in the pool, being super happy because we won the semifinal. And I thought that was great. I thought that was really funny. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was a good thing. I mean, we were so happy after Senegal. Good result, good feeling. It was quite devastating with the final to just do one corner and then the final was over from our side. But on the other hand, to get a result like that, it was really good. It's like you said, considering you came in late and everything, it's good to have that that progress in the right direction. And so even if it didn't go go entirely planned, you still got that, got a bit further in that sense. So it's good. And then obviously everyone's just loving it so much they stick to their word and they they do the better. Yeah, they did. Uh, so then what's it been like getting involved with the legacy project? So again, that's a whole other side of things that you don't really have in other motorsport. I think I usually say that in Extreme E, it's more that you are marketing a, a um, you're marketing the legacy program via the sport instead of doing other activities to market the sport. Mm-hmm. And what we did, if you speak about Senegal, to go out and uh, the goal is to do one uh, million mangrove, to plant one million mangrove trees. Uh, we did not manage one million in one day because that's a lot of work. But we did, however, manage, I would say, I think maybe two or three football fields uh, with all the drivers okay. getting there. And it was super easy. You just down in, in the ground and that was it. But then you also feel that we are doing a difference. Uh, we are definitely doing a difference also when it comes technology-wise with Extreme. It's a great platform to uh, try out things in the most extreme areas, but then also to do these legacy programs and to really contribute to the better, also speaking of the mangroves, taking up uh, carbon, but then also uh, for the society there, it's really important for them to have these mangrove trees because the oysters are then attaching to them. They are then taking away the oysters, selling them so that they can provide their families. And coming to societies like it was in Senegal and seeing how it is, knowing that we can make a better change or make make it better for them with the legacy program is so important because this series isn't just about racing and winning. I love racing. I love winning. I love making good results. Uh, But then on the other hand, to have this important message uh, on the other side with the or the same side as, as the racing it's it's really it's it's everything you can ask you about so that, that that's at least what i feel so it's just kind of maybe and correct me if i'm wrong but you've kind of got this balance there where even if say the race weekend doesn't go perfectly you still get a lot of satisfaction out of the weekend because of these these legacy projects and the fact that you know you've you've done some good in in, in some respect yeah i mean like i said i love racing and of course i will be devastated if i don't have a good race weekend but you know that you are doing and contributing to something bigger and for example now we also have this count us in challenge in extreme e it's it's easy steps but if you read those steps and you're thinking okay maybe i can try to think about this and i can try to do this all those things matters maybe not if it's only you but if we can create a community like Formula One have that many fans and everybody are doing these count us in steps it is going to be a big impact in the whole world and I feel that that's that's what extreme is all about making it making the world in a better place but then making us people also to better humans thinking more about what we are doing and it's not not expecting everyone to suddenly change and be completely different overnight it's just lots of little things and showing how that can build up because again if it's it's just one person doing it. It's it's very nice, but it's not necessarily going to do. But you just want it, everyone can do a little bit. Then it makes a massive difference. Then 
being able to promote that and then yeah. have the racing alongside it to keep everyone entertained is kind of the best of best of both worlds in that sense. Yeah, and then also in, in a positive way, because don't get me wrong, climate change is really negative, but very often it's it's like finger pointing and saying, you have to do this, you have to do this. But if you try to make the change in a more positive manner, uh, I do believe it's easier to, to do something. It's like it's like working out. If someone is saying you have to work out, but if it's more, oh, come on, let's have fun. It will be fun. You will feel good afterwards. It's easier to do it. I like that analogy. <laughs> That's so, how I see it. Uh, so switching slightly then, what other forms of motorsport interest you? I mean, I have to say uh, off-road was not something that I used to be <laughs> interested in before, but now it's like every time there is an event, I'm trying to watch and learn things because there is so much that I can learn. You see, you see why the family enjoys it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like circuit racing too. So watching other, I'm racing TCR in Sweden. So watching other TCR races, WTCR um watching rallycross i think that's also really exciting of course now watching rallycross the latest event where kevin won was really highlights uh, so so yeah i like to um have like to have a look into other motorsports as well but i have to say lately the off-roading has come closer to my heart i think that's quite a nice way to bring it full, bring the full circle there for how it all started with, with everything um then what motivates you to keep you focused during a race weekend um, I, I love what I do and I think I've, I've really done that ever since the start and what motivates me in general is my passion for what I do. I, I love driving cars, I love finding that great feeling and I also love the challenge so Extreme is very new to me and there are a lot of new challenges to me but I love to develop myself and see where is the limit for me? Where is my, my maximum, the best that I can reach? And I think those are the things that motivates me during a weekend as well, that I really want to be as focused as I can and make the best thing as I can, because I want to see how far can I go as a driver uh, in these areas. I always just find it interesting to see what, what people say to them, because again, it's, it's whenever, there's a, whenever it's a good weekend, it feel, I feel like it may be as easy as to keep yourself motivated. So I always think when it's a a tricky one or you're coming into something you're not too familiar with if it's the same thing but it's just that passion just fuels you so much and gets you so far i think so i think it's the passion but then also to to find this place to know where is the limit for myself where do i find the, the best that i have for myself and i've always maybe it sounds weird but i always had this voice in my head saying that you can do this and uh, you've got if i had a bad weekend you've got more to give and that is that then, then keeps me going and keeps me motivated and I think yeah, I mean it's my own voice so that's good though I can continue <laughs> self self uh, motivation then just not, yeah. not giving up um, we, we touched on it briefly earlier um, how important is it that extremely ensures that women get it get to race alongside men in the series really important when they came with the idea because that was not a something that was part of the series from the start that came up later than um, going into yeah into the work ahead of the series and people are always asking me why isn't there a female a driver in formula one and i try to explain and say that it's not it's not just one series that you're speaking about it's it's the whole way speaking about formula one or even top top levels of motorsport in general it starts when you're a kid it starts when you're five six seven eight that's when you need to get the the chances to to race against the best, uh, be in a good team, get the support then financially with sponsors because it is an expensive sport. Mm -hmm. And then for Extreme Meat to create a platform where you're gonna have to have a female driver and a male driver, it is gonna give opportunities for younger girls to where, where sponsors and teams are looking for younger girls to really push them forward already when they are young and not when they are yeah, 28. I mean, I've been lucky to have the interest within my family. So I have been doing motorsport since I was young. Uh, but of course, it takes it takes teams to believe in you. It takes, And if you have series like this, giving this platform for females to really be at the top level of motorsport, I think it's going to create a change also in the younger uh, generations where with the 10-year-old girls are also going to get this these real chances to become the best drivers because that's where it starts. It's not starting when you're 25. It starts when you're 10. So it's, it, it sounds such a, such a common sense answer, but it's completely right and completely agree with you on that one. 
Yeah, no, but it's, it is, I mean, people think it's the easy answer to the question, but it's not. It starts very it early. In theory, but not in practice necessarily. Yeah. Do you think then that other, other racing series should follow extremely in the making it mandatory to have that have that second driver being being a woman then? Or is it just kind of showing you that there, there are ways of doing it if you and you should be promoting it in this way? I think it's great to promoting it in this way and where it is possible to make that format, uh, you should do it. However, if you look at Extreme Me, I mean, it is completely new in so many ways. So they had the opportunity to just to just create whatever they wanted, uh, which they which they did and did really good. But I think for other series, you have a set format, you have what it is, and then maybe it is hard to change. Um, but definitely, if the possibility is there, I think it's something you should do. Then finally, something completely random. Would you rather be able to speak to all animals or would you rather be able to speak every foreign language? I've been thinking about this question. And first I was thinking mm, to speak all the languages would be really exciting because then you can speak to all the people all over the world. But then I realized that, I mean, if I do try to learn uh, other languages or maybe other people speak English or Swedish, what do I know? I will, however, never learn how to understand what an animal is saying or thinking. And my mom and dad, um, they got a, a puppy. Well, now he's soon two years old, so I'm not sure if he's a puppy anymore, more of a teenager. But I do think if I could speak to him, that would be lovely. So, you know, I would say the animals. So you've given that a lot of thought. I like it. I have. <laughs> Uh, well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, and I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the Extreme East season, because we've got Greenland up next, and then Sardinia has just been announced for after that, so it should be exciting. Yeah, uh, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. It was really nice speaking to you. Thanks. It was lovely chatting with Michaela. I loved her insight into the extremely legacy projects in particular and how important it is for all of us to do our part when it comes to tackling climate change. I want to thank her again for coming onto the show and I wish her and the rest of the JBXE team the best of luck for the rest of the 2021 season. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos on the On The Curbs YouTube channel. Away from YouTube, you can find me over on DriveTribe and feel free to follow me on Instagram at t.elbers.daily.drivetribe. You can also find me over on GP Grandstand TV, where I'm part of the weekly podcast. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next week for the next episode.